truly about relapsing. Now, I never actually relapsed, but I know a lot of you have or are on the verge of it. So if somebody asked me to make a video on relapsing, so that's what I so that's what I'm doing here. One of the things about relapsing, if there's a good thing that can come out of it, is that you can really kind of clarify why you left them in the first place, right? Because chances are, and I'm a betting man, I'll be a betting man on this, chances are probably about 99.9% .9 that when you go back to them, you'll get abused again, you'll get discarded again. You'll get devalued again, and then you'll think, or before that you'll think, well, if I go back with them, I'll know when it's gonna happen, and I'll have better boundaries, and I'll be a stronger person, and then I can get them to change. Or maybe you don't even say you want them to change, but in the back of your mind you're thinking, or deep down you're thinking, but they'll change, I know it, he said he'd change. She said she'd change. She said it's so, you know, I realized my mistakes. I found Jesus, I found God. I found you and, and nobody else is like you and yada yada. Okay. People don't really change that much unless you see them change, unless their behavior changes. Words don't mean squat, right? So if they say they've changed, what changes have they made? But anyways, getting back to the validation where, where the relapse can be a good thing. A relapse can make your decision final where you have no shadow of a doubt that this person is toxic because part of the reason we relapse is that we think they're gonna change we think okay well they're, they're really gonna they're really maybe I was wrong maybe I was not the right maybe I was overreacting but then when you when you go back to them you get slammed again right so Yeah, it's kind of, um, I don't want to say it's funny, but it's kind of funny how, how how we are. Now, again, I never truly relapsed, but I did, before I actually broke it off with her, or she broke it off with me, it's, it's uh, I reframed it in my mind, right, that I set my boundaries, but but she discarded me. Um, but I I was so, my, my narc did such a, a treasonous act of infidelity, no, uh, she was. I, I had. I found out there was such a deal breaker on my end that I. It was easy for me to cut it off. Okay, you know, um, but I didn't know about the cheating until later. So, for that, those three or four months when I was in limbo land, where I was just like, I want to believe her, give her the benefit of the doubt. She says she's not. We're still having sex, so it's like okay, so things are things are okay I guess but they don't feel okay that was kind of my relapsing sort of because I never really broke it off completely but once I found out and got validation from the hotel saying yep here's the receipt she spent the night here and she spent the night here and she spent the night here or actually she spent the day there I guess you know getting hotels in the middle of the day during work hours it's <laughs> okay Oh, business trip? Wait, you're in town. Um, so, so yeah, the relapse, the relapse. Why do we relapse? Well, one of the reasons that we relapse is that we don't have enough fortitude. We haven't built, we haven't built our fort. We haven't built our, our, our list of why we got rid of them in the first place. Now, maybe we have a list in our head, but from what I've found that's not good enough you really if you really want to stay no contact what I'm talking about is relapsing from no contact what you really want to do is have a list write down everything write down a, a, a why I'm not with that person list you know write two write two columns right so write some of the things you know why you stayed with them the good qualities and then write the bad qualities just like you would do um, like Ben Franklin used to do right he used to make a list of uh, why he would do something and why he wouldn't do something and he would tally him up right he'd have 10 reasons to do something and three reasons to not do something and usually the 10 would outweigh the three so 
yeah, take it from Ben. Ben's got some good ideas there. And uh, if you do that, then you'll have, then you can always go back to that list when you have a weak moment. When, you know, it's Saturday night, you're alone, he's texting you, hey, what's up? <laughs> you're thinking, if, now if you got the list down in your head, you're thinking, yeah, abuse is what's up with you, mother, you know. That's, that's how you want to be thinking of that. Like, first of all, you want to think, how the freak did he text me? Or why is he using his parents' number to text me? Hey, it's me. I'm using your my, my parents' number to think I can't get a hold of you. And you know, that's what you want to be. You 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 want to be pissed at that. Like, wait, I set up boundaries with this person. Why are they why are they violating my boundaries? That's kind of what uh, what you that, that's where you want to be. Now, what a lot of us are is like, I remember seeing this all the time. He hasn't hoovered me. I'm depressed. He hasn't even tried to contact me. I'm like. That's, you don't want him to contact you. That's exactly where you want to be. But then our fears take over, right? Well, what if he's with somebody else? Or Good! He's, <laughs> that's what you want. You don't want to be the one that he's with. Okay? So, and I'm talking about an intimate relationship. With, um, with people that are friends of yours that you may found out, wow, they got some narcish tendencies. Since you're not with them all the time and you haven't maybe built uh, a family together or bought a house together, you can take those people in limited doses, oh, all right? So I, I'm i beginning to do that. I've, I've kind of reconnected with some of my narc friends after I kind of like set the boundaries ablaze where I was like, nobody's getting in my fort, you know? And now I'm like, yeah, there's some people I can let in in limited doses of time, okay? In limited ways. Don't Don't let them borrow money and, you know, I mean, just, there's just, just knowing what you want, what I want, and being able to apply that and distinguish between who's healthy for me and who's not, that's all the difference in the world, but, but the relapse, the relapse, um, again, just have your reasons, I think, what I found for people is having your reasons for and against why you would go back to them, why you wouldn't, um, I would never, folks, I would never go back. I would be letting myself down. I would be contradicting everything that I've been telling you guys, my growth, you know, to just do that. It would be such a violation of my character, you know? It's just like, that's how you want to be. It's like, you're important, okay? You know, we're so used, to, I was so used to being the people pleaser, trying to please everyone, putting myself second, you know? Well, are, are, are you happy? Okay, if you're happy, then I'm happy. And you know what? It doesn't work that way. Healthy people are happy, and then they go out with other people and make them happy. But they don't make them happy. They just are happy whether the person gets derives happiness from them or not. And that's kind of cool, you know. And I was I was typing this out for somebody this morning, and and that's you know deriving your happiness. Your importance, you're feeling good about yourself. If when you get that from when you get that from um, something other than somebody who's human, humans are jacked. They're all like selfish, right? I'm selfish. You're selfish, and we only have a limited amount. Look, I I could barely love myself. So how can I go out and give all these other people all this love? It's not really even love that I'm giving them. It's it's me trying to get love. It's me trying to uh, appease them to please them. Oh, appease them to please them. Oh, that's that's a good one. Um, hey, I'm pretty talented. So, so that's my message this morning. And if you relapse, it's okay. Maybe you're getting more validation that it's okay to see the value in your going no contact. Um, don't beat yourself up. Most people, it takes about seven times. So if you're number three, you don't have four more to go necessarily, but... Just make your list out and know that the world is full of lots of people out there. And what you'll find like me, oh, they're full of lots of people, lots of jacked up people, lots of people that have their own issues, right? A lot of people are just struggling. All, a lot of my friends that are in relationships, I wouldn't want to trade with them. Take the gift of what you have. That time alone can be the most spectacular. I found the most spectacular time for growing. I connected with so many friends. I connected with so many of you on here um, online too. And it's just it's just an incredible time that um, is an opportunity that um, 
you know, you might not have if you get in a relationship with somebody else. But I would say when you get in a relationship with somebody else, you want to have that base set. You want to have that I love me set, that I've, I'll take care of me, that self-care. <clears throat> because, and, because without it, I just think you're, you're just, you're latching on to somebody else. Kind of what the narc does to us. They latch on to us. They suck our, our emotions out. And, and we, uh, you know, being happy around somebody, um, based on if they're happy or not, that's, that's, it's just a, it's a losing game. It may feel good for a little bit when somebody's happy and you can be around them and kind of like, well, feel like you're making them happy. Like, you know, you make them laugh or, you know, you give them love or whatever. It's, it just, you'll see the, you'll see it's just such short term stuff that it gets, it goes away. You know, it's just, it evaporates really quick where when you give that, when you get that love from, uh, I want to say from some, somewhere outside of yourself, um, now I, I, I use God. All right. That's why I, Sunday I, I go out and I, I get on my knees. Right. And because <laughs> trying to get it from humans is like, it's not, it's jacked. It's really jacked. So, um, I would just encourage you to do that. Maybe, um, you know, find it, find that spirit, find that power outside of yourself, whatever that is. Uh, for me, it's God. For some people it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's other things and I don't want to get too much into it because that, that, that can get controversial and it can put some people in a block. Right. Um, but just look at, uh, you know, listen to Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, some people that are very neutral on, on, on that kind of stuff, but more, are more into the moment and to what you have, what, the, you know, tapping into the universe, the universe works. So, you know, whether we like it or not, the world kind of revolves the way it, it's going to do it. It's going to kind of happen the way it's going to happen without our involvement in it. You know, if we're gone tomorrow, you know, things will still happen. People will still do the things they're going to do. They'll be good. They'll be bad. But we like to think that, you know, I think for me, I, I, I like to think that I had such an impact in the world and that I could please people and make people so happy and everything. And, and I, I'm just realizing that <laughs> somebody, somebody took a glass of water and they filled it up and they said, here's how much impact you're going to have. Um, like when you leave work, okay, say, say you leave work. So, so they said, stick your finger in this water. And then that hole that that's made when you pull your finger out of the water, that's how much impact, how much of a lasting impact you're going to have wherever you go. And I was like, yeah, that's about right. In other words, folks, there's nothing. I mean, there's, there's nothing, but that's okay. We don't have to, we don't have to carry that responsibility on ourselves. We don't have to make, make it so we have to be the people pleaser. We have to make people happy around us. People are going to do what they're going to do. And it really doesn't have a lot to do with us. You know, hot. Now what we have to do with us is everything. We can control this person here. We can control the person within us, but the people around us, they're going to be happy. They're going to be sad. They're going to be angry, you know, and, and, and if you're adjusting to every, every whim, every little, you know, time they get upset or whatever, it's just, it's just, it's just draining. And then we go back to our old patterns and then, you know, are they happy? Are they sad? So. I, I, I would just say it may seem boring at first because you're, you know, you're like, well, it's just me, you know, and, and, you know, there's not as much excitement. Narcs bring excitement. They bring a lot of drama, high highs and low lows, you know? So that's kind of what I think you're kind of like maybe breaking the addiction from is that trauma bond, that, that extremes, you know? Oh, they can make us really happy, but again, they're kind of making us ha happy. We want to, we want to be able to drive that happiness on our own. And, and without having some drama, without having some sadness in our life, we would never recognize the happiness, right? That there's that contrast, the, 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 the feeling good and then feeling melancholy. But, but my lows now, folks, are, are very, they're very, um, you know, I feel like I've healed a lot, okay? And I'm sharing this with you because I sucked two years ago. I was just devastated. I was in a very bad place. Okay. So I'm sharing this with you because the, the lows are not like they used to be at all. They're, they're just very, they're very, uh, tiny. They're tiny. They're, they're just not, they're just not really there as much because I'm not affected by other people as much. 
I get to choose who I get to, to, you know, to spend time with. I get to choose how I can say things and, and not worry about, did I say the wrong thing or whatever? I mean, still, yes. I mean, still, I want to make sure I don't, I don't, um, do things to, you know, upset people or whatever, but, but I do it on a sense of like a love, this love and abundance. Like there's so much around us. There's so many people that, that w would appreciate us so, so much more. And, and, um, yeah, so there's just a lot of things that was on my mind. I'm not relapsing. That was just a joke. I'm not going back to my narc. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my kids would probably like it though, but you know, maybe I'll sit with her in the, in the stands at the, at the football games or something, uh, that, that, you know, where my, my son is playing football in, in his uh, high school, but, but that's probably about it. And the limited dosage. So, um, limited dosage, like I need a dosage of her. Ugh. Ugh. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Just that thought of, uh, getting with a narc. <coughs> that's what it should do. It should just make you sick, make you physically sick to think of being with them. That's healthy. Being sick is healthy when the thought of being with your narc is just like making you throw up. That's about where I'm at, folks. So limited dosage, that's fine. Now, if you're, if you're starting fresh, no contact's the way to go. If you have kids or something, it's a little different. You got to kind of finesse that with gray rock, but um, get healthy, folks. And don't put pressure on yourself to get healthy. Just let it happen. Let your body, let your mind, let your soul tell you what you want to be. What do I want to be when I grow up? Well, you're growing up now. And you can experience this, this constant pilot light that's on, on your furnace, right? That's Maybe some of your, your pilot lights have gone, gone out. Somebody used that example the other day. I thought it was great. Uh, I can't remember where I saw it, but you know, is, is your pilot light out? Cause you can't burn, you can't burn that fuel. You can't burn that, I don't know where I'm going with this, but but you don't have to have this big fire and everything's going crazy to be happy. You can just have this slow burn and just have this constant just supp supp supply, supply, uh-oh. Have this constant love supply coming to you um, when you are uh, connected in a big way to the universe, to God, whatever it is with a higher sense of, with a connection, that connection, so that you're, you are, you are feeling like you're a part of something instead of feeling alone. When you're connected, you do feel like you're a big part of something. I feel like I'm a big part of this Facebook page, not because I post a lot or whatever. I don't post as much as I used to at all, but I'm connected to you guys because I get it. I, it's like, it's like I'm being used for something and that's, that's a really cool feeling to be used. It really is. Okay. That's, I know it sounds contradictory, but it really is it, because it's not all about me. I don't have to worry about what people think as much or, I mean, or what people think, you know, it's, Hey, this is, this is what I'm saying. And, you know, and, and so many people are just so just, they're thinking it's so off and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just people, people are people sick or, you know, hurt people, hurt people. So if you got around a lot around, uh, if you got a lot of hurt people around you, you're, you're, they're going to try and hurt you. Now, how do you not get hurt around them? You don't hang around those type of people. You get away from those people. You don't need those people. You don't need anybody. I said that you don't need anybody. If, if Facebook and YouTube went down tomorrow, I mean, that would be, I'd be bummed, but you really don't need anybody. You've got, you've got the connection here. You've got the connection here and here and it's, it's there and it's, it's good to be with other people, but it's not, it's not the end all. Um, now, do I like helping other people? Do I want to get involved with other people? Do I want to be connected to other people and feel that connection? Yes, but not, not to this person or to that person. It's all, it's kind of, kind of like a sum. Like if, uh, I have some friends, they want to go out next weekend. I'm looking forward to that, right? Well, if they say, uh, if they cancel plans, I'm not going to like, it's not going to ruin my day. It's just going to be, it's just them. It's just something just happened or maybe they don't want to go out with me. Maybe uh, you're on Facebook too much. We don't want to go out. Who, who knows? It's like, it's not my problem. Okay. So, and I don't derive my sense of who I am and how I feel about myself based on other people's plans and they change plans on me. Maybe that narc, uh, you know, cut you off, devalued you or something, you know, it has nothing to do with you. It's them. It's them. It's their problem. 
you know? And if they cut you off and you're not with them, maybe it's meant to be. I would guarantee you it's meant to be. Not necessarily that it's meant to hurt you, it's just, it's not healthy for you, you know? Oh, I drink this poison and it doesn't taste good. It makes me throw up, but I keep drinking it. No, it's not healthy for you. There's a reason you're throwing up. There's a reason that your body is repulsing it because it's not good for you. Your body and your mind and your soul, everybody, uh, it, it innately knows what's good for you, what's healthy for you. And my thing, I think what people should do and like to do is to, is to, you know, get rid of all that from them. So anyways, I love you guys. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.